Hello! In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the implications of the exciting Unreal 5 Early Access release. And so if you're like me, you're starting to notice that technology seems to be accelerating quite a bit, especially if you've been looking at the release notes from Unreal for the last several years. And so what you might want to start doing is start thinking more strategically. And what does that mean? It means looking at what's coming out and figuring out what you should learn now, what you might want to wait on, and definitely what you want to avoid. Okay. And I'm breaking these down into two key categories, incremental advances and disruptive advances. And so what do I mean by that? Incremental are advances on technologies that are sort of currently in existence. They might deepen uh, the workflows or you know, the quality and slightly accelerate um, the workflows, but, but they've sort of been there before. Whereas disruptive advances would be an, an increase of an order of magnitude or 10 times at least uh, the speed increase. And so, or, or a completely new process that overturns uh, the way you've done things before. And so an example of this would be like, maybe you've been doing things and you, you took the time to memorize like a 10 step uh, process. And then in the new release, it's a button. So that's the kind of uh, disruptive advances that could uh, transform the way you work. And so let's take a look at, first of all, how to keep your radar out. And so what I would do first is keep your eye on what Unreal is talking about. I mean, they let everybody know last May that Unreal 5 was coming and the, the biggest release features were Nanite and Lumen, right? The ability to have nearly unlimited poly counts and also um, essentially uh, lighting that just works the way light does in the real life, right? So, and here we are. A year later, we have early access to it, to the technology, right? It's not production ready yet, but essentially we're able to get our hands on, try out the user interface. Also, in some ways to be reassured that it's, fairly similar in some ways to the existing uh, Unreal 4 and that the Unreal 4 projects will port over, which is really great news. Um, the other thing that I keep tabs on is the public roadmap. They've recently overhauled this. Let me pull it over. But it's really great to see what is set for the next release. So we've got 4.27 that's going to come out soon. Um, and you know some of the updates that are due. So if you're a, you know if you're struggling in a certain area where I was considering in the past um, October I was considering using the remote control web app, um, but I also noticed that there was an update due in 4.26. So I put that on hold, and because I was looking at it and I was like, oh well, you know you need a lot of JSON knowledge and you know web coding skills, but you know. When 4.26 came out, you know, it was a plugin. Basically, you turn it on and it works. It's amazing. Um, you know, I'm excited also for, you know, doing some AR work this summer. And there's going to be a new AR template and a new VR template. Uh, I also loop back after a project and you try to look back at some of the more recent releases because you may have been focused on one area of Unreal, especially given the size of your team. You might be doing something different and uh, you might look back and there may have been some tools that just that weren't on your radar and then you're like, oh, hey, this tool will speed up my, my process in the near future. Okay, what else? Keep your eye on things like this, the Inside Unreal, which is uh, Thursdays at 2 p.m. on Twitch. You know, unless you have a specific question you wanna throw in or you know, you like the excitement factor, I wait for the YouTube, which is actually, they sort of you know post it right to their channel afterwards so that I can speed run through it and then slow down when certain technical directors are talking about things that are going to directly impact me in the near future. The other thing is keeping an eye on the Twitch schedule. Uh, so the Insides Unreal schedule is, uh, you know, I posted it, clipped it and posted it here. So especially if you're like a lighter, you might want to be like, oh, okay, I'm going to really set my calendar, be watching, you know, the news from the Lumen talks or, you know, oh, okay, what are mega assemblies? Oh, you know, that's something to do with um, the way, you know, you might be laying out your, your sets. And so that might be something to, to keep your, your eye on or your ears out for in terms of the, uh, the meta sound technology that's out there. It's really cool stuff. Let's talk a little bit about the incremental advances. 
I wanted to give some examples of elements that I consider incremental like advances. I mean, they're awesome and they can be really helpful to some developers, but they sort of like are adding on to technologies that have been out there. Uh, the posed based system, there was a posed based uh, capture that was in 2017. So we've got this pose snapshot. It's really a, a great technology. You know, if you get your character that it goes into a ragdoll, you can do a, a pose snapshot on it and then have it uh, get up from that pose. It added a lot of realism. Same thing with things like uh, there's a company called Ikinema that just got recently purchased by Apple. You know, some of the traces from like the foot placement system that's in Unreal 5, that's going to be like a default. Advanced developers have been like, doing tools that incorporated it. But, you know, it's incremental advances. Same thing with like particle systems, Niagara, you know, some of the stuff that you used to have to do outside of Unreal, things like uh, flacking behaviors or texture-based color emission, or, you know, even like crowd-based particle systems. Now you can kind of do it in engine and, you know, Niagara is all node-based, it's amazing. A convolution reverb. So the audio tools, I would say it's sort of on that edge of um, disruptive, because I'm not an audio person. I'm, I'm putting that in incremental category because we've been able to do spatialized and attenuated audio for a long time in Unreal. It's just things like the synesthesia system where you can have audio that responds on tick with Unreal and then also the next generation tools that are gonna allow you to do things like uh, Convolution Reaper. It's gonna allow you to calculate correct audio environments based on um, almost like ray tracing your environments. And so that it's gonna be amazing. Some of the shading tools, RBT, you know, that's something also that's just, you know, in 4.26, let me quickly pull that over. It's a great technology. And, you know, I think it goes, it's gonna go hand in hand with um, some of the, the technology that is coming out with like Nanite. So it's good to be aware of it, but also, you know, we've been able to do levels of detail in the past, but this is gonna sort of kick it to the next level in terms of efficiencies. And already some of the people who are producing tool sets like Brushify recently updated all of its tools with RVT. So I think also the fact that Quixel Bridge is in there, that, that would be an incremental, but it's sort of on the edge because in some ways the ability to do material instances in Unreal, it was uh, sort of an order of magnitude speed difference, the ability to like create instances and then create parameters and dial different materials and instantiate them. It's amazing. We're, we're going to the next level with Quixel Bridge where there's a huge already batch of those materials. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that um, in a future slide here. Uh, same thing with fluids and volumetric clouds. We've got you know the ability to now calculate volumetrics in engine, which it's been coming. And same thing with fluids. I mean, there's spring-based mesh dynamics, even in like Unreal 2, I remember. You know, it's coming back and it's better than ever. In terms of the, the disruptive advances that have the biggest impact now, I mean, obviously Nanite and Lumen if you were learning the nuances of SSAO or distance field ambient occlusion, you might want to wait if you have a very high-end graphics card or if your pipeline can allow for Lumen implementation, just because a lot of that faked bounce lighting, you know, could be something that'll just be built in. Same thing with built-in LODs. I mean, the, the switch over to Nanite and the way it's computing LODs and HLODs, I think that's something I'm going to be, you know, keeping my eye on. The other thing too is this, I think MetaHuman is a good example of the shift to a modular or parametric type of design. You know, sculpting is not going to go away or 3D modeling is not going to go away. It's just, you're going to get that much closer to your end design with these types of modular uh, humans. Um, other plugins like Real Illusions Character Creator Studio can already do, you know, non-photorealistic based humans or, you know, st stylized characters. Whereas the MetaHuman, it goes very towards the realistic end. Let me just quickly talk about areas that I would avoid spending time on in the near future. And each one, I would say there's an exception for each one because there's a lot to be learned from the past, right? I would avoid uh, complex deprecated 
um, processes, especially things like um, if you are doing 3D modeling in order to like model a face, that just doesn't seem like that's a useful process. It's good to understand, you know, a good topology, but um, I think that unless you're, you know, you're doing something stylized with like super low poly workflows. Materials, I would say it's really good to know the nodes, but I would also say that you were going to a meta level where it, it's good to be able to know the nodes in order to edit uh, the materials or edit material instances um, for, or unless you're making your own stylized or uh, sets. Um, same thing with uh, Cascade particles. I would avoid using Cascade. Um, it's still in there, but um, sometimes you might find some really great effects that were done in Cascade and you could like port those and make your own effects. Uh, the other thing that's sort of on the horizon is the world composition tool. That's uh, if you were doing like sort of really large landscapes, that's being deprecated. Um, same thing with sublevels. So I would, you know, avoid le learning that. That was talked about in the last uh, Twitch screen stream. Um, unless you're in production. If, if you're already down that path, you, you know, that's, you know, production ready and you can you know, sort of use that. Some optimization workflows, I would say, you might want to hold off on because the engine just might take care of that for you. And so deeply learning how to optimize certain things, not to mention like the amount of RAM and the speed of like GPUs keeps accelerating. So certain things you might want to hold off on and again, unless you're doing something that like AR and VR or something that, you know, that, that's like a tablet based game. So things to learn now, I would say, you are safe when you are improving your foundational skills or your conceptual knowledge. Things like all the different facets of design, I would say, you know, doing design for visual or emotional impact, you know, interactives or interfaces. There's some amazing design thinking, uh, critical thinking, also design narrative in terms of, um, and things like the math hall. I'm sure that some of you are wincing when I say that, but I mean, vector-based math isn't gonna go away. Uh, it might, go to the next level, but you know, that's really useful knowledge to have. Same thing with uh, object oriented programming basics. Other things you might wanna like sort of hold off on or wait, there's gonna be a lot of novel interfaces and there's a lot of technology based convergence going on. And you know, that was really obvious in like December at yeah, Project Anywhere where um, GIS information was being threaded with Unreal. Also, eye tracking is going to be, there's going to be some amazing advances in interfaces based on eye tracking, I think, in the next several years, especially when it's starting to be built into uh, VR goggles. Right now, it's sort of research level, but I think, you know, in the near future, we're going to see a lot of that. Also, in network and team collaboration, especially remote, is going to accelerate. You know, I'm working on virtual production research this summer, and the network and team collaboration tools are already getting better. That ties in with learning and training acceleration, right? The need to learn at an accelerated rate and lock in that information and be able to use it is, you know, it's higher than ever. Not to mention some of the novel interfaces are gonna tie into that. Diegetic interfaces, interfaces that exist in the level are something that you probably could spend time on and be safe. I left this for last. AI infused tools, they are already uh, here. If, if you've been keeping track of Promethean AI, some of the things that are on that tool set, I would keep my eye on that as a starting point, not to mention the AI playground from NVIDIA. Also, I would say safe would be broader cross-disciplinary knowledge. So some of those would be going cross-disciplinary and also go deeper into your skill sets, but cross-disciplinary things like team collab skills, communication and leadership, uh, ecosystems and economies, urban planning, archviz and smart cities, human kinesthetics, as well as the future of narrative and medical or military applications. So things that are gonna cross, especially cross over in areas that have large pools of funding would probably be a safe bet. If you're in this field, Unreal is growing. Like the demand for interactive 3D has just been growing at an insane pace. And so it's a great field to be in right now. The, the fact is though, you gotta like sort of keep up with the trends. So hopefully this gave you some tips for where you might want to pursue some additional knowledge as well as hold off. All right, well, hopefully it was useful. If there was anything that I specifically missed, I would love to hear feedback and we'll catch you in the next video.